Clash Royale. For Matt Poole for Mac. Uh, because I don't think Frozen Temple made it in. So we'll see if Reality can take King Sejong Station here or if TY closes it out with a 2-1, or excuse me, a 2-0 yet yeah, again in the a rematch. 4-0. <laughs> They total, it could be potentially over the reality here. The game has loaded up. Let's jump into King Sejong Station for game number two. Here we are on King Sejong Station, KSS, for game number two. And up in the top left, in the red, winning that last one, it is TY. And his opponent in blue, 0 1 here. Can he bring it back? It is Reality. If Reality gets a top eight, it would be one of his best career finishes in the individual leagues. Yeah, I, the I know Korean it sounds tournament. crazy, but it's. It's, it's true, you know, and it would be a huge accomplishment to knock out uh, SSL top four player TY as well as GSL finalist TY, uh, a, who's one of the best Terrans right now, completely in full form, uh, really second tomorrow, I would say, in my, in my personal opinion, um, and just above Cure, who was defeated today in yeah. two big upsets. But, uh, I mean, that, that's another thing, too, is Reality gets out of this group, he beat Cure and TY. I'm like, whoa! If he gets out of the group, uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, so far, just the story it has been kind of like an underperforming cure, and Ty just bopping him left and right. He's he's got like three of those hammers from ten questions, ten answers <laughs> that Joey used to do. He's like bopping him from all different sides, using his foot like trying to bop him and stuff. That's well, the way it looks every, so far. Every single one of. Uh Reality's units is speaking English, man. <laughs> it's not allowed. Yeah. Well, he finished work and he came down. Promote StarCraft 2, he says. And he watches, I think it said he watches every uh, every single one of our like little programs we do afterwards, the like Battle.net yeah, attack type thing. Yeah, you take gold. Couldn't even remember what it was, even though I just read it. <laughs> Uh, keep in mind, that's actually going to start after this. Yep. So these good. guys, I think Kanata stays, but uh, Monday Caster and Dehyun, uh, not the normal SSL casters, they actually come down here and start that show at this time, after it ends. Right now it's 10.15 p.m. in Korea. These Kanata, guys are overflowing with passion. Kanata, like, literally lives and breathes StarCraft. He also ladders random GM, like, every night and. uh was even like top of the ladder in NA as random from Korea. He's like, yeah, I mean, I, I could just get top 10, no problem. Uh, this is kind of a funny situation Ooh. here where you see the load <laughs> command used. Save that SCV. Oh, let's, uh, I guess, uh, like, stop making jokes with the Korean commentators here for a second. The uh, trades are real on both sides of the map. Can he uh, deny the CC? No. He tried to. These uh, Reapers still not cleaned up, but on the other side, three SCVs to go down. But the load command, for those who don't know, if you look at the top right of the CC command card to the bottom right, you can see the arrow that points through the circle. The load command actually allows you to load up to five SCVs inside the command center. It's designed so that if you wanted to take an island base, you could actually load SCVs and fly them to the island. Mm. Uh, it never, ever, ever, ever happens. It happens it's sometimes. It's happened before. For sure. Like but. it's 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 happened with Kangnam style Terran. It's happened on Scrap Station, uh, where you know Terran's yeah. flying the CC to the island and stuff like that. But it's pretty rare. It's mostly used in competitive play to save SCVs during harassment like this. Okay, this and even that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> no, necessarily they start the orbital and you know exactly. that's the end of the story. Reaper comes in, gets a nice scout and an SCV. Ty is just on point today. He has a bunker here. It's going to make this uh, defense a little bit easier. He's got a Hellion. Insta pull, by the way, taking no damage here. Uh, not going to be the easiest drop to clean up. Definitely but not. Uh, but he's, he's going to get a cyclone low. here in a second. Oh, these units are stuck and loaded. Ooh. Oh, he's being range. greedy. He really wants to make this work. I don't know about this. 
Okay, the Cyclone actually targets a Marine. He's running Hellions by, that's why he's trying to do this. Oh man, oh, man. look at that. It's totally cleaned up, and now in the natural, this is not getting nearly enough damage. And Reality loses all of his harassing units, and TY holds with flying colors. Drops triple mules once he secures this, salvages the bunker. Um, TY has three CCs, so a counterattack is less... Uh, it's just less appealing. I, I'm, I'm losing my words yeah. here, but... This is kind of looking like uh, Cure versus Reality Game 2. Yeah, no, it really is. Um, here comes the Liberator towards the main base. This uh, will get shut down hard by the Viking once it's out, but before then he will have to pull. Doesn't like he's realized what's happening just yet. Now he must know. He's taking four. He like just five. moves his starport, but still knows. So I'm like, hey, you know, there's a thing <laughs> happening over there. Oh, look at this. The he late was scout. This. Yeah, this is why he didn't notice at first. He was controlling yeah. this Reaper. Scouts the cloak, and Ooh, reality is just scout. not getting any luck tonight. Kills the Liberator, too. Still getting kills here, by the way, in, in the main is this Reaper. Five kills? This is too much. Gets two in total this run, and man. Yeah, I mean, he sees everything, gets some extra kills, takes out the Liberator, too. Up 20 supply. And Reality's gonna take a risk. He's like, okay, we're going bio this time, and we're gonna go double upgrades early on. We're just gonna try to, you know, play for the late game, go from there. He's too far behind to go for mech, I, I suppose, and it's it's not gonna be easy. He's gonna hope that TY doesn't attack him, attack him for like five minutes, which uh, TY smartly is not going to do that. Not going to not do that. And... and you got too see. deep with the double negatives there. Yeah, I did. Uh, TY, after scouting the Cloak Banshee, made several turrets. Cloak was canceled by reality, but still, he's pretty safe back at home. The Banshee shows up at the third base. There's no turrets there. And you can see TY considered sending his Vikings home, but he's actually going to push the issue here with them. Not entirely sure where those Marines were rallied here. Pulls the SCVs away, and he's going to commit to the attack. Not going to send his Vikings home. Looks like he might just send a rallied one or. If that Cyclone is still alive, you might send that up to deal with the Banshee. Oh, these two tanks here, right on the edge. He's in at range. Oh, just barely not, I guess. Yeah. Like the footprint is right outside. Oh, okay, that was the scan range, that's why. Yeah. Well, coming in here now, gets a snipe on the Liberator. And now with even one Marine coming in, just have to back off, takes a trade that he just slightly loses there, T.Y. Yeah. Um. I was going to say something, but I lost it. Sorry about this. <laughs> it's all good. Nice position here now from TY. Look at that. Can shell the third base. Spanshee, there is a turret, but we'll be able to pick up some kills here on the outside of the base. Forces a lift now. The Banshee here is just not really being micro because he's so worried about what's going on over here. A cycle box on the Banshee's here, excuse me, Vikings. He takes control. SCV's off the line, they're on top of these tanks so they can't be killed, but Reality loses one of his tanks on the other side of the, the battle. The Cyclone is going to maybe kill the last one it does. Yeah, Vikings, Vikings are landed. Vikings landing, picking off a couple of SCVs and just going to back off. He's decimated the economy at that third base. The orbital is even at half health. And, and finally, totally fine back at home. Yeah, he lost a lot of mining time. But it was still more damage done overall for TY. He cleans this up. He's already mining, whereas the, the orbital was lifted for reality. Combat shields on the way for reality now. Four reactors on four new barracks for TY. He wants to pump out those Marines, which is why the supply looks so even right now. Uh, but he has this faster production. Reality is doing the same. It looks like only with three additional barracks. And he does have uh, the upgrade lead, as you were talking about, with the greedy double eBays. 1-1 one, one, uh, ahead, 1-1 one, one for TY, getting closer to being done, but we're not quite there yet. And in fact, you know what, Reality has to combat shields up first too, just slightly, but that is a very significant upgrade. Yeah, we're going to stabilize here for now. You know, the trade definitely going in TY's favor, but as you mentioned, a lot of mining time loss at the third base too, so it's not like he totally destroyed Reality in that push. It's going to be, it's really going to come down to what moves are made here in the mid game now that this early harassment is done uh, to get either player ahead. Like, Reality definitely is still in this game. I mean, he's not even really all that far behind. 
And he can definitely make some maneuvers now. We're going to get to see him play, you know, Marine Tank. Finally going to get to see that style here. And we'll see how it works. I mean, TY has been really on point so far, but, you know, we haven't seen Reality's Bio just yet or his Marine Tank, so. Let's see how uh, this coll a collision of army comps works because you can see TY is really interested in baiting stims Ooh. and trying to take this sort of engage outnumbered. It's like winning the game of tank of chicken but baits these units into position where the Vikings come over. This is a really lift. interesting trade, actually. Because he has the Vikings, he could have tried to kill Marines with his tank of axe because the, uh, the tanks, if they land, they're not going to be able to pick up a second time. Jax backs off instead, though. And 2-2 two -two is on the way for reality now a lot faster. Again, because he had those faster eBays. The... The lead in upgrades is only significant if they fight while the upgrade advantage is active. So that's just something to, to keep an eye on if you're watching and you're wondering how the next fight's going to go. If 2-2 two -two is done for reality, that's going to be a massive spike for the, that one window of time. We should have some idea since he did start those engineering bays so early that he, he could possibly potentially be ahead here in the upgrades. And we do have this nice little drop coming in from the left side here for TY. He's even going to drop first. I like this. You can stim in. That orbital is at half health. He can easily snipe that here if there's no defense. And there's absolutely nothing. He comes in trying to get some SCVs. That orbital is dead beat. Down it goes. And a lot of SCVs should go down here as well. He's going to fight with them even. And he thought gets about out, it. <laughs> he gets out uh, maneuvered here. 13 SCVs go down. Ebays are exposed. Plus 2-2 two -two is not done yet. He really can actually prevent this. He goes for it. There he goes. He's going to stop no the defense. armor. Oh, the repair is too late. And there he goes. Immediately takes it out. And even if these Marines go down, doesn't matter. They've already done their damage. Oh, man. Reality starts his plus two armor again now. Um, but now TY is going to be ahead in upgrades. He starts plus three attack. They're currently even, but in a few seconds, the armor advantage will go to reality. Would have been better to get the attack, but still, this adds up. And... He's got the better tank count, is moving across the map. This is a scary backstab attempt. The SCV does not envision, the center tower provides vision, but it's gonna be still like not enough warning time. If he moves all the way across the map, Reality will be able to counterwise snipe that base very likely. Look at this, the fight for the watchtower. Reality tries to bring in two, three Marines to take out the two Marines of TY, but TY's army is there, so he shuts that down. Fourth base here in the middle, becoming a planetary, and TY is looking to make his move. I'm really excited to see what Reality's going to do. Okay, he comes in here. How quickly will TY respond? He's just going to go back, corner this army. He knows he has the eco advantage. If he kills this army, he can just counterattack and win the game. He saves this orbital very quickly. He needs to come in from the right side, though, or some of Reality's army could escape. Okay, That's now he comes going. in. The scans come down, but all the tanks and TY get on top, and this army is definitely trapped. He just has to try to take the best trade possible. Okay, he's getting a decent angle here. In fact, now Reality is sieging up this plant area as well. Okay, here comes TY. He knows he has the numbers advantage. He's going to push this through, clean it up. Not a very cost-efficient trade here for TY, though, to be totally honest. Yeah, now he's got to deal with uh, defending this fourth base. Still a lot of medevacs up on the top of this uh, uh, of this map. He should actually send his Vikings over there to take him out. Plus three when it finishes here. I mean, he already has the armor advantage, but when plus three finishes, he's going to have this awesome opportunity to do some real damage directly. Oh, going to trap these medevacs, as you mentioned. At least as well as he can. Should get at least yeah. one more. He's going to get all of them here. Going to go down slowly. In reality, I mean, he's, he's hanging in this one. You know, he heavily supply blocked TY with that attack. There were so many supply depots over there. He's going to take his own fourth. His, it's not going to be a planetary. He floats his natural. And let's take a look at the upgrades. He hasn't even started 3-3 reality, whereas no. TY is about to finish plus three attack, and he started his plus three armor. Don't forget, too, that if any more bases die, he's in big trouble because he only has two orbitals left. TY did not lift any. In fact, his main could be made into a fifth base. Reality needs to take an insanely cost-efficient battle to win this game. Otherwise, he's just simply going to be outproduced. He's down seven siege tanks, but he has doubled the marine count of TY. Uh, he's down in upgrades, but I mean, obviously numbers do matter. 
Okay, this could be an opportunity for reality. He stems beneath the ramp. There's so many siege tanks here, though. Oh, man, the siege tank count is way too high. And DY, although he does get a lot of those tanks cleaned up here, he's going to try to have to drop those tanks. They're not very protected over there, reality's tanks. If he can take those out, he's going to be in a great spot. Trying to drop one tank over here now. The better economy for TY. Look at the resources to the top right. He's been able to produce more here. And he's going to have three, three upgrades to two, two in just a second. That was a great fight for reality. It was the cost efficient fight he needed to keep himself in this game, but he's not taking a lead by this for any me by any means. He's just stabilizing. He's trying to survive with his two orbitals with more and more units rallying across here. I mean, he's going to have to do something like that once again. I, I really like the angle he's taking. That's kind of what you have to do when you're in these desperate uh, times, when you're behind in this TVT. You have to find an angle where the opponent is not and, you know, find some damage in the back door, perhaps. But now I feel like T.Y. is kind of stabilized. He's, yeah. he's held that fourth. He's got that sensor tower now in a great spot. This is just an orbital. As you said, it's already low. He's going to target it down. That's one of his only two left, and down it goes. And down goes the economy of reality as well. He he's needs... mining at that third, but that's about it. He's going to go for this attack again, but how many times uh, too does many this tanks. work? Too many tanks here. I think this is the beginning of the end. T.Y. with such quick response time, he has more medevacs here as well, and the Vikings are trying to pick the medevacs of reality G -G. off. GG, T.Y. Oh, man, the 4-0 against reality. He leans back in relief. He knows he's done his job finally. Reality, unfortunately, will have to wait for next year to get another shot at an individual league in Korea. That's right. Samsung already out of Pro League. You won't be seeing this guy until 2017, barring uh, qualifying for an additional non-Star League tournament. Kespa Cups, Hot Six Cups, things like that. Those don't it's count true. as Star Leagues. Those don't count as real. They're yeah. individual league wins, but they're not... Star League wins. Like Star League wins are the prestigious ones uh, yeah. that are the hard ones. Not a, I won a weekend tournament, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, at least we'll be able to see him potentially if he does get into those Kespa Cups. But uh, probably will be few and far between for you reality fans. And, do you, you know, Cure is going to be out there. He's going to be playing Pro League. Here's how things went down today. Yep. Patience took Cure out in a tough Best of uh, three there in the beginning. Cure taking the one win with the base trade. And TY was able to 2-0 Reality later on. Patience with a big upset there over TY. And Reality was able to win over Cure, which might have been arguably a bigger upset as Cure drops out in fourth place. Then in the rematch, TY extends his 2-0 into a 4-0 and will advance against Dark. So here we go. Dark versus TY. Stats versus Classic, Solar versus Deer, and Patience versus Zass. Those are your brackets. Pretty crazy uh, first uh, match up there, Dark versus TY in the round of eight. Sometimes this just happens, right? And even Stats versus Classic, too, a very close one. That should be favoring Stats there, but Classic definitely having an opportunity. Solar versus Deer, that's like a toss-up, man. I think Deer should take it, but Solar is, he's so feisty, man. He's been doing well in SSL. And that last one, though, Zest, I, I think he probably is going to take the easy win over Patience. But who knows? I mean, Patience.